Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 409, Sarcopenic Obesity. What is it? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Dr. Maupin's office is dedicated to staying on top of current research and changes in medicine. The field that she's in, hormone replacement therapy, is one that is considered to be controversial by some people and leading edge by others. Leading edge in the sense that it does track changes in research, uh, changes in outcomes that offer new ways to understand illnesses, and in particular, the illnesses that come with the aging process, and to combat them and treat them and potentially avoid them. So we are constantly looking for new information that will help build our database of knowledge for how to, how to understand mm-hmm. these issues and how to approach them medically to get the best results for you. One of the terms that we've run across recently in our continuing research is a term called sarcopenic obesity. We've talked on a number of different podcasts that we've done about sarcopenia, and we've talked about obesity, and we've linked the two of them together with diabetes. And today we're going to play dominoes because (laughs) we believe in what we call the domino theory. We believe that there is a domino effect from the issues of aging that begins with the loss of testosterone. When your body begins to reduce its production and maintenance of testosterone, then other illnesses opportunistically attack. And we began to decline towards our ultimate death. And those are the incremental and additive issues of aging that we fight every day at BioBalance Health. And we do it primarily by trying to stop the dominoes. Uh, But there's not just a single thing that you can do to stop it. You have to be knowledgeable, informed on multiple fronts. You have to have medically validated, uh, Mm research-supported interventions that you can do. So let's start with talking about the domino theory and how that applies to what you do. So when I look at a patient's chart to decide whether they need to come in, Mm -hmm. I have their history, their medical history, and the diseases that they've already gotten, the medicines they're on, all their history, plus their uh, hormone um, laboratory, but also health lab. So I can look at all of that and get a picture of that patient and what they need have they lost the first domino, which is when the domino hits, that's your testosterone dropping. In women, it slowly goes away until you hit menopause, and then it's gone, basically not existent. For men, it's just a long-term lowering of testosterone levels. But not everybody feels it the same way. So some you could have it, you could have a loss of testosterone, and by 70, you're still making adequate en- enough for you. And another man, same age, could have been 10 years without testosterone, and he has multiple illnesses because of it. So we look at at the first domino, which is loss of testosterone for women, both loss of testosterone and estrogen. And then we look at all the things that have already happened to you and try to back them up. Like if you have prediabetes, we try to help you get rid of that. We use medicines, we use testosterone, we, and we use uh, diet and exercise. We also do a body composition. And that's very important when looking at how much muscle you have and if you really have muscle or are you just fat with very little muscle. So you have a machine at your office called the in-body machine mm-hmm. that people stand on and, and hold their thumbs on two arms that extend out. And it can electronically measure the the muscle mass and fat mass Mm -hmm. and water, Mm -hmm. those three things, Mm -hmm. in every segmented part of your body. So you get a printout that says your left leg has this much of each of these three Mm -hmm. things, your right leg, your left arm, your right arm, your trunk. Mm -hmm. So you now have the technology that lets you say to somebody, your muscle mass, fat mass, water mass issues are this. 
or, right. or ratios are this, mm-hmm. uh, which we haven't been able to do before this equipment was invented. Right, and, and it's very it's helpful to me because when I first look at this patient's picture, I don't see them yet. Mm-hmm. Then they come in, and I already have an idea of what I think I need to do to make them healthy, and a multiple treatment plan besides testosterone. So the testosterone or the hormones in pellet form, and then... Maybe they need a medication for prediabetes. Maybe they need a medication for for inflammation or a supplement for inflammation. But I can look at the body mass and get a better picture because if they have, if they're normal weight and they have no muscle and they're all fat, it's going to take us a while <laughs> to get them better. You are not going to feel better and look better and be healthier until you get your muscle mass back, which always requires testosterone. Whether we're young, we make it. You can't or build we're muscle old, without testosterone. You can't build muscle without testosterone. You can you can go into the gym when you're 30 and, and make muscle because you have your own. But when you're 50 or 55 and you go into the gym, you're just going to be you're going to be treading water. You're not going to get bigger. You're not going to get stronger. You're not going to stay as strong. Your muscles will still decrease, even if you increase your reps and increase your weight, and you'll be more likely to get hurt because your muscles aren't as strong. Hurt, like tear one? Tear one or hurt a, or a tendon or, or, or hurt your joints mm-hmm. that are connecting all of your muscles. Okay. So muscles are so important and no one talks about them. That Now this article, this new research talks about them. Right. And literally links them to keeping your brain as you age and keeping your health as you age. So the research articles that we're talking about, this is from... Uh, the National Institute of Health, and, and it's just a, a summary of different research uh, developments. Your there. government at work, right? This government is your tax office. dollars at work. Right. And they start by explaining the historical understanding of the term sarcopenia, mm-hmm. and then they talk about obesity. Then they talk about diabetes, mm-hmm. and, so, and they do it in a sequential way. Mm-hmm. But they're trying to find a way to, to – because they found an anomaly. If you're just looking at muscle mass mm-hmm. – you can measure how much you have and how much you've lost. If you're just looking at obesity, you can measure your fat. But what they're finding is that some muscle, the fibers of the muscle themselves, mm-hmm. change mm-hmm. over our lifetime, especially for those of us who overconsume calories and under-exercise. Mm-hmm. And under-testosterone. The, the, the more sedentary we become. Mm-hmm. Once, well, once we've lost our testosterone, mm-hmm. all this stuff is exacerbated. Mm-hmm. So what happens is, as I understand the research, mm-hmm. Your muscle tissues themselves can convert to fat cells. Mm -hmm. And so they switch from being muscles to fat. You look like filet mignon when you're young, (laughs) and you look like a ribeye when you're old. I'm not kidding. That's what the muscle, if you cross cross section the muscle and you haven't exercised and you haven't eaten properly, meaning enough meat products and enough animal products to replace muscle, and you don't have testosterone, that's what you look like, ribeye. Yeah. So your muscles don't look as small as they really are. They, I mean, they look like they're kind of swollen, but they're swollen with fat. Okay. So oftentimes we watch patients, their muscles will get smaller at first because they're losing the fat in it. So, <laughs> and then so their when muscles I feel get my bigger. muscle is just more squishy? Yes, it's it, more squishy. Instead of a solid base or right. a firm. Right, and you're not going to see these cuts yeah. in your arm. Right. You know, you're going to see. They're all round out. They're going to be all smooth and kind of rounded, right. So... As I lose muscle quality, mm-hmm. muscle fiber, and put on weight, mm-hmm. I can't reverse that trend unless I have testosterone. That's right. If you lose weight, you're going to lose fat, but you're going to lose muscle as well, and it's going to get worse if you're, if you're without testosterone. So in the research, they talk about uh, changing in hormone balance. The hormone milieu is what they mm-hmm. say. Uh, which As a treatment. Yes, but, mm-hmm. but in, in as a cause describing as well, the, the understanding of what is sarcopenic obesity. Mm-hmm. And they say that if you have lost your hormone balance, if it's all out of whack and you don't have testosterone, you can't mm-hmm. get it back in whack, mm-hmm. uh, and you are converting some of your muscle tissues to fat cells, mm-hmm. you are more likely to become obese. A parallelism that occurs with the increase in obesity mm-hmm. is an increase in inflammation. Right. And inflammation is really damaging to your body as you as you age mm-hmm. and for, for illnesses, for opportunistic infections, 
Uh, inflammation makes pain. inflammation is is necessary in the body to some extent. If you get hurt, you it re, your body heals by using inflammation. But if you have inflammation all the time, which is what obesity causes, mm -hmm. and we check it by looking at the CRP level in the blood. But if you have obesity all the time, then it is very difficult for you to have to, to be pain free. It's very difficult for you to think. It's very difficult for, for you to not get like an autoimmune disease. I mean, inflammation is bad to, I mean, it deteriorates your body. So it makes you old and all the things that go with old. So could so, one argue that testosterone also, I mean, do you have scientific evidence that, I do. that testosterone will build muscles, mm -hmm. help you build muscles, mm -hmm. give you the capacity to build muscle, but it will it independently also help you fight inflammation? Yes, but it also helps you lose fat because as here's how it works. When you come in and we give you testosterone pellets, in the first four to six months, you are going to grow muscle and your fat stays relatively the same and start just goes down just a little bit. And, and we're not talking about weight. We, we have other conversations We're talking about, about the weight. body composition yeah. and what I'm looking at in my, in my objective body composition test. Okay. So the, the muscle itself is getting bigger. The fat itself isn't just, isn't going down as equivalent to your muscle getting bigger. Usually people can gain a few pounds at first because it's muscle. Their bones are getting thicker. His testosterone makes bones. So that's heavier. Well, the whole osteopenia thing mm -hmm. as opposed to sarcopenia. You're, mm -hmm. you're, as you age, your bones get more brittle. Mm -hmm. You're more... So, uh, but they don't have to. They, they don't have to. They, they can do something about it, testosterone. And, and we don't need drugs for that. We just need our hormones. Yeah, we don't need something... Like, well, I don't know if we can say the name of the drug. Yeah. So, so in any case, the second four to six months, then I see... The muscle is now burning a lot of calories, so it's Im improving the meta metabolic rate of the patient. Mm -hmm. So then they are burning their fat, so they're using it up because their muscles need to be fed, and their muscles require blood sugar, and they pull it from their fat. So then we see the fat mass going down, and then after their ideal in their muscle mass, which is basically, I mean, it's, it's actually calculated. I can't even give you a... <laughs> Everybody's a little different too. But when your muscle mass is excellent, then you are burning the fat. So you're going to be able to lose weight. Where do you just think about it? Where do we burn fat? Why do we burn fat? Because our muscles need it. Mm -hmm. And our brain takes some of the some of our calories, but our muscles are the biggest organ that takes calories and burns it into energy. But it's not all harmonic. No, hormonal. it's not just hormones. You need because other things. you have things. to worry about your intake of calories, mm -hmm. what kind and how mm -hmm. many, and you have to worry about your exercise level. You have mm -hmm. to. Uh, one of the things that you've fussed at me about as I get older is that I have to do not just cardio exercise, mm -hmm. but I have to do resistance exercise mm -hmm. strictly to focus on maintaining and or building muscle mass. And I've noticed your shirts and your shoulders are getting tighter. Because <laughs> he's lifting heavier and heavier weights. But if I don't do that, if I don't do something along those mm -hmm. lines, then just getting testosterone replacement isn't going to solve the problem. It'll it's a multi build, It'll build problem. muscle as long as you have the building blocks. Exactly. But it won't build right. a lot of muscle. Mm -hmm. It will just build enough to be healthy. But it won't build like, I mean, if you really want to burn calories, you need more muscle than is just average and you need to exercise. But well, you need building blocks. But, but I'm not thinking about it in terms of the old Charles Atlas commercial. No, I mean, I'm that's not, not what I'm striving for. What, I don't, what I'm thinking about is when I walk around somewhere and I see older people who have lost their balance, who, who walk with fragility. They're who, afraid to fall, so they're just Who have to have a, a cane or two canes or a walker. Or a person. Because they don't have the muscle strength in their legs. Mm -hmm. They don't have the, the strength in, in their spine to hold their body mm -hmm. upright. And they don't have the balance that they need to be able to walk normally. And, I mean, if you ever go to the grocery store and you, you're behind these people, I mean, it is a, a test of my compassion, my Christianity, to be patient with them. Because <laughs> yes, I want to get to the patient. hell out of the way because I'm in a hurry. And <laughs> they, they, they can't. They don't. That's not a pretty side of you. It, but. <laughs> it is not. I not freely confess to it. I, I, it's a problem for me. So, uh, but but so grocery store. Let's yeah. go from there. So the gross. So when you go to the grocery store, you have to remember. Don't go on Wednesday morning. Yeah. The old folks. Have come. <laughs> so, so I'm just 
That's hilarious because we're both over 60. <laughs> you know, anyway, uh, but we feel good and we don't act old. In any case, when you go to the grocery store, and I hate to tell this to people who are vegans, but most of my vegans don't get enough protein and they don't get enough of the right kind of protein. You have to be, to be a true vegan with muscle mass and good muscle mass, you have to, you have to think about it all day long mm. just to get enough protein that builds up muscles. Otherwise, it's really easy. You just eat animal products, and that gives you the, the building blocks for your muscles. So having said that, I'm going to have a lot of people be unhappy, but I can't help it. Those are the building blocks for your muscles. You have to take them in, and you'd have to eat a lot of beans and a lot of... A lot of beans and a lot of nuts. Uh, yeah, quinoa and things like that to get even a part of that. And I realize there are some athletes that can do it. I'm not sure how they do. But they've got people doing that for them all day. Yeah. Giving them their food. Every, every and I don't think the here. average person can do that. In general, I find that they eat junk food instead well, of eating meat. Rather than making global statements about the condition, what you're really referring to are the individual to people that you know that come in That's and say, right. I am vegan either uh, out of diet choices or uh, ethical choices. I don't eat mm -hmm. uh, meat. Uh, my son... Is, is a vegan, and he says, I don't eat something with a face uh, or a mother. So does he eat eggs? We, we have these conversations. <laughs> There's no face on an egg, <laughs> but well, eggs are the perfect food. We have these conversations, and he tells me, mind my own business, and then he's fine. Okay, so, well, but But the, the discussion that, that we're having, talking about it, uh, is based on your individual observation Experience. of people that live this lifestyle mm -hmm. and your access to their health data. Well, this this week I had a, a man who has O blood type, so he's a, a meat eater. He's a hunter-gatherer kind of um, body type, and he was vegan. And when we went over his blood type, he decided to start adding some meat products and some eggs and cheese to his diet. He lost 25 pounds in four months, and he didn't even try because – it was, it's just that it wasn't the right diet for him. Right. <laughs> he needed the meat and, and the eggs and the cheese. So, so for him, he was trying to do something that wasn't the proper diet for him. If you're an AB or an A, those, those blood types are much more likely to, to be successful yeah. with, so with a, a vegan a, diet. An ingredient that you have to yeah. factor you in. You have to factor that in, is our genetics. So we are talking about, New scientific research that builds a series of cases, not one coordinated case, but a series of cases, data that tells us that you have to fight obesity, you have to maintain muscle mass, you have to fight inflammation, you have to replace your testosterone in order to maximize your opportunities to stay healthy as you age, to stay vigorous, to stay active, to stay capable, and to avoid the illnesses and diseases of aging that incapacitate mm -hmm. you and put you in a, in a wheelchair, make you immobile, uh, and so many other miserable conditions of aging that happen to us if we don't take care of ourselves. And we are learning there are things that we can do. And they start with the domino theory, and they start with the domino of testosterone. So if you are beginning to experience these symptoms in your life, somebody that you care about is beginning to experience these symptoms, Talk to your physician about replacing your testosterone and see if they're open to that consideration. Mm -hmm. And then find somebody that specializes in doing that who can observe and maintain and work with your physician on a plan for you that impacts your diet, your exercise regimen, and your hormonal balance. Those are the things that you need to do to stay as healthy as you can for as long as you can. And we are dedicated to that. That's our goal of BioBalance, and we want our patients to live a long time and not be ill and not be taken care of by their children. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.